What's good everybody, it's D Brown Shanghai, and today I'm going to be telling you guys the story of how I became an NBA 2K fan. And I've told this story before on the channel, but I've never told the full version, the full in-depth. I just gave you like a little bit, I gave you the gist of it. Today I'm going to tell you exactly what happened, and, and thinking about it even to this day, all these years later, almost 10 years later, it still pisses me off. So before we get to the story, I got to give you a little bit of, you know, the background information, you know. So back in the day, way back when I was a wee lad, maybe late 90s, early 2000s, is when I really got into like video games. You know, I don't care what nobody say. When you three, you're not really playing the game, bro. You're playing the game, but you, you don't know what's going on. So around the age of five, six, you know, in that age range, I started playing games heavily and started understanding what was going on. And as we all do, I had my go-to games back then. Even as a kid, I would play my, my WWF, the SmackDown 2 game, SmackDown, WWF No Mercy, WWF WrestleMania 2000. It was a lot of wrestling games. The Spider-Man game, Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, Inter Electro. Uh, what else was I playing? I had Mega Man. It, it was a lot of games on PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 that really, you know, that really had me drawn, and those were my go-tos. I know I'm missing some, but those what came to mind. Now fast forward to NBA Live 2001. I have vague memories of playing this game. I remember I remember there was a crazy intro. I remember Kevin Garnett was on the cover and I remember that you could play in the streets. Like you could play one-on-one -on -one in the streets. And I used to do that with like Michael Jordan or somebody, I think. I, that's that's pretty much all I remember about the game. Now in the following years, I would become a bigger fan of Live. I don't know how, but for some reason I didn't play Live 02. If I did, it was like barely. I know I didn't have the game. I didn't play it a lot. But I played 03 and I played 04. 03 and 04 were pretty cool. They had like minor improvements. They had like freestyle air and like the new crossovers where you could break ankles. But NBA Live 05 was the game that turned me into an addict. NBA Live 05 turned me into a basketball game addict. That year, that was the first year that they had the new Dynasty mode. And they had the, the new All-Star Weekend with the dunk contest, three-point shootout All-Star game. I put in so many, excuse me, scratch that. We, me and my friends, put in so many hours into that All-Star Weekend alone, not even counting the Play Now games or any of that stuff, just the All-Star Weekend alone. We played that so much that to this day, I still remember all the dunk combinations. Like if you gave me a PlayStation 2 controller and it was like my nigga do a Statue of Liberty dunk right now, I guarantee you I could still do it. And the new Dynasty mode at the time was like incredible in my mind. I remember it was like a little phone that you had to like talk to people on. And it was it didn't even change anything about the game, but just the fact that you was talking to people on a phone like about trades and stuff was so cool to me. Every day after school, you know, I would come home I'll play, I'll do a little bit of homework, and then I'll play some NBA Live, then I'll go to baseball practice or whatever sport was in season, and I'll come home, and I'll play it until it was time to go to bed, unless I went back outside to play sports with my friends. But that's all I did. At that time, when Live 05 dropped, all the other games I had were sadly shelved because I played hella Live 05. But now let's skip a few years ahead. 06 and 07 was super dope. Now, NBA Live 08 is where the falloff began. Now, in my time of doing YouTube, I've had the pleasure of talking to a bunch of people who've had NBA 2K be an integral part of their life. Either they grew up playing it or they grew up playing live and switched. But talking to all of these people helped me come to the conclusion, helped me make the realization that there's a lot of factors that play into what your game was growing up, right? There's a bunch of things. For me, it was, it was location because in the town that I was from growing up anyway, everybody played live everybody play live there was like if you were one of the people who played 2k like we didn't shun you or nothing but you was just we was just like oh like nigga, you play 2k word i mean that's you but we, we gonna stay over here on this live my nigga that's you but around nba live 08 and nba 2k 8 things started changing and that's because like i said there's a lot of things that you know that can cause the what games you were playing at the time and one of the things that changed like the the shift from nba live to 2k and the place that I was living was the fact that all of the older kids made the switch. I don't know what made them make the switch. Like maybe, maybe they just saw that yo live on some BS and this is the better game now. But the reason that all my friends made the switch was because older cousins and big brothers were all switching to 2K. And so naturally we all switched to 2K too. So I was on the late train. I didn't switch until NBA Live 10. And I'll give you the story. <laughs> After about five minutes of background information, I'll, I'll finally give you the story. 
on what made me switch from live to NBA 2K. So I remember getting NBA Live 10 for Christmas because that year specifically, when I was in eighth grade, I, I got blessed that year with a, with a lot of games. Like my sister bought me Madden, she bought me like a controller. One of my aunts bought me Grand, like not Grand Theft Auto, my, one of my ba aunts bought me some like AAA title. I can't remember what game it was, but I remember I was getting blessed. And so I already knew off top, like to ask my mom for Live when it first dropped, would have been, I would have got smacked in the face. My mom would have sweet chin music me through every door in the house. So I was like, yo, mom, you know what I'm saying? Let me get this game for Christmas. I'll wait, cause you know, I'm a good son. I don't want you to beat my ass, so I'll wait. Which I did, and she came through, and she let me open one gift on Christmas Eve every year. And of course, I always open the video game that I asked for. It was always either live or a wrestling game or something. But I opened NBA Live 10, and it's history from there. I made a dynasty, all right? So I made a bunch of different dynasties this year in NBA Live, but one of the ones that I ended up sticking with and having hell of seasons with, I did with the Cleveland Cavaliers, because if you don't know this about me, before I was a Warriors fan, I was a LeBron fan. I was I liked the Warriors, but LeBron was my favorite player, and I thought he would have been in Cleveland forever. So when LeBron left Cleveland, I didn't want to go to Miami Heat with him. So I was like, fuck it, I'm a Warriors fan. We were still trash at the time, so yes, this is facts. I am not a Golden State Warriors bandwagon fan. You heard it? You heard it? You heard it? You heard it here first, guys. So with that 2010 Cleveland Cavaliers team, I played a bunch of seasons in the Dynasty that year. I remember having like rookies that came in and developed into superstars. I had Dwayne Wade and LeBron on the same team. And I was like like years into the future, like hella years into the, into the future now. So I remember not losing the game yet that season. And I was like, I was far into the season. I don't remember how long I was, how far into the season I was. But I remember playing against the Charlotte Bobcats at the time. Yes, they were the Bobcats and they beat me if y'all know that video of the little boy it's a little boy sitting with his shirt off and he's crying little boy with braids he's crying playing 2k because he's getting his ass whooped i guarantee you me in eighth grade that was me sitting in that room i wasn't crying but i can guarantee you i was in there bitching i was throwing a temper tantrum because i was losing i was about to lose my first game to the charlotte bobcats and it like i can't even i can't explain the anger. I, anger I can I can attempt to explain it to you like oh I was really mad but it, it won't do it justice like I was irrationally mad so much to the point that this is a real story now this is really what happened this is how I started playing 2k I said fuck this game I'm taking it to GameStop so when I lost the game I took it out didn't play it I didn't play it until I like I, I didn't go to GameStop until like a week after and it literally just sat in the case I didn't play it I said I said to myself I'm taking this shit to GameStop and I'm getting 2K. And I meant that. And I did it, bro. I did it. It's also worth mentioning that I knew for a fact that I was trash at 2K because one of my best friends had it. And I used to go to his house all the time and I would play 2K10 and everybody in the house would whoop my ass. Like the sorry niggas. Like the niggas who don't even, who didn't even play video games like that would work me. I'll be like, yo, put in live. And everybody was like, nah, we not playing that. We not playing it. So over the course of the next year, I made sure I grinded hard in NBA 2K10 because when 11 came out, I was not gonna be that nigga to steal on. Y'all niggas was not gonna be beating up on me, 21 skunking me no more. I told myself that we ain't having it no more. So what I did, I pre-ordered NBA 2K11. I paid for the entire thing with my own money, which was a big deal because I ain't had no job. I don't even understand how I got money. Like my mom would give me money for like the vending machine, but like, like that's about it. Maybe that's what I did. Maybe I saved my vending machine money. But 2K11 dropped. The first day it came out, I went to GameStop and picked it up. You know what I'm saying? I got my pre-order. And then we discovered crew mode and the rest is history. Honestly, crew mode is what made me good at 2K. Playing crew with my homeboys back in 2K11 is what made me like, you know, I, I ain't shit now, but when I was good at 2K, it that's what made me good at 2K. You feel me? So yes, that is my long overdrawn out story about how I became an NBA 2K fan. Shout out to Live 10 for pissing me off. Probably that's that's probably one of the top three angriest moments of my life. And it's a video game. Isn't that crazy? And, and one of the other top three moments is probably something from FIFA. Isn't that even more crazy? But yeah, man, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If y'all played if y'all weren't playing 2K your whole life, what is the thing that made you play 2K? And if you were playing 2K your whole life, who introduced you to it? Like who put you on? So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like. If you want to join the Shanghai fam, subscribe today. And as always, I am D. Brown Shanghai. 
and I'm up out of here. Always confident, there's nothing that I mentally fear except giving into new trends. Never look for new friends, cause I don't wanna ride with some loose ends. I barely pay a rep, and it don't matter. They tell me bring a plate, but I'ma show up with the platter. Here's the ladder to success, better grab it for it's too late. I'ma be a multi million dollar man while you hate, don't ask who's great. I'm in your vicinity, drivers in.